Thanks, Jamie. My name is Travis Young. I'm the Vice President of Biologics at Caliber. And I'm going to tell you today about some of the immuno-oncology approaches we're taking at Caliber. In general, Caliber strives to take a really differentiated approach to cancer immunity. And I'll, I'll show you examples of that in our uh, cellular immunotherapy program called switchable CAR T cells, which we're driving towards the clinic now, expecting to do uh, a phase one clinical trial on this program uh, starting by the end of the year for lymphoma patients. I'll also tell you about uh, a program that we're running in, in prostate cancer that uses a bispecific antibody that leverages the specificity of an imaging agent uh, in order to target prostate cancer. And then I won't have time today, but I'd be happy to talk to anyone afterwards about a novel gamma delta T cell agonist program that we're uh, working on right now, which is uh, the development of a novel immuno oncology target that could be somewhere on the level of a, of a PD1 or PDL1 type impact, but very early stage for that program. So, CAR T cells, you, you might be familiar with uh, the cellular immunotherapy called CAR T cells. This is a really remarkable therapy which has provided phenomenal response for patients with hematological malignancies. Up to 90% of patients uh, with relapsed refractory ALL uh, have complete responses to this therapy. It's a form of gene therapy where the patient's T cells are genetically engineered and given back to them. And it's the first approved gene therapy in the U.S. Kim Raya from Novartis uh, was approved last year. But despite the potency, there's significant safety liabilities. Uh, and there's been patient deaths that have occurred in the clinic. And so the challenge is, how do we maintain the potency of this cellular therapy while controlling safety? So first, let me tell you about how CAR T cell therapy works. A uh, patient comes in, uh, their leukophoresis, their T cells are, are, are brought out uh, into the lab, and they're genetically engineered with a lentivirus vector that harbors a gene that enables that patient's T cells to seek and destroy a cancer cell. So this is a living drug. The patient's own T cells become the medicine. They're expanded in the lab, brought back to the patient, and reinfused back into the patient. And, I, and like I said, the, the, the responses that we have here are really remarkable. Up to 82% of patients with relapsed refractory ALL leukemia who have failed every other prior line of therapy respond to this therapy. Uh, standard of care for that patient population right now is just 10% survival after five years, CAR T cell therapy brings that up 400% to, to 42%. So uh, the responses are really providing clear patient benefits where patients had no other options previously. And you can see here how fast the responses are. Tumors are eliminated in just 30 days, complete disappearance of the tumor. But there's some serious challenges with CAR T cells. So here's a clinical assessment of a patient that comes in. They're treated on day zero. And within 48 hours, their fever spikes to around 103. And along with that comes some severe neurotoxicity, which folks really don't understand yet fully. And, and that's exhibited uh, here by a writing exam that they give to these patients. When that fever spikes, this patient uh, has severe a dysgraphia, can't write, and in the worst cases, patients experience cerebral edema and have died, and that's led to uh, halting of trials for CAR T cells. So there's a, a clear challenge here that we need to address in order to harness the um, efficacy of this cellular therapy. And the way that Caliber has looked at this is, well, if, how do we control the CAR T cells once given back to the patient? Because the problem appears to be, once they're in the patient, they're off on their own, and they, and they can expand and cause some serious damage. And there's a lot of different ways that the field has approached control of CAR T cells. There's the reactive approach where you can treat the patient with steroids and just, and just treat, the, treat the symptoms. But Caliber has taken a pro active approach. And, and in differentiating ourselves from how other folks have done it, I'm going to show you how our antibody-based switches can improve the versatility and the safety of, of CAR T cell therapy. So here's Caliber's approach. This is a patient's T cell. It's genetically engineered with this uh, gene here, which is the chimeric antigen receptor, which allows it to target a malignant cell. Uh, what Caliber has done is, is we've dissociated this from the targeting. So we've dissociated the activation of the T cell from the targeting. We've done that very simply by incorporating an antibody molecule in between the two. So the antibody serves as a bridge between the CAR T cell and the target cell. And the vision here is that the patient can receive one dose 
of this CAR T cell, and then a cycle of the antibody, and you can tune or titrate the level of activity. And so that's exactly what we've done. We've demonstrated that this approach has equal activity to Kimraya in the clinic, but that we can tune or titrate the level of cytokines to potentially avoid CRS in the clinic. And that because we're using antibodies now, it becomes a universal platform. So the same therapy that we can use to treat ALL leukemia, we can use that same CAR T cell to treat solid tumors here. And we've shown that we can eliminate breast cancer in mouse models as well. But one of the challenges that we had here was, well, when CAR T cells are not being activated, what happens to them if they're not on? Everyone originally thought, well, they would just go away uh, without any type of stimulation. And we actually found it's the complete opposite. What happens is when you're not stimulating those T cells, it allows the cells to rest. And so when those cells are resting, a couple of things can happen. One, if they're targeting B cells, B cells can come back in the patient because B cell aplasia is a really serious problem with conventional CAR T cells. Uh, two, you can redose with different types of antibody-based switches. But perhaps the most profound finding that we have is that we can provide now a method of treating patients with cellular therapies, potentially, where we can do on-demand in vivo expansion of those cells. And it completely changes the way we think about treating patients with cellular immunotherapies. A typical cell would go into the body, expand rapidly, wildly, over 100,000 times, and then decay over the course of years. Now, we can tune, titrate, and recall those cells when we need them on demand and target any given antigen. And so that's really important for patient safety. So we've partnered this program recently with AbbVie in June. Uh, who's been a phenomenal partner for us. So we're going to start by demonstrating proof of concept I mentioned for CD19 positive malignancies in lymphoma patients by the end of the year. We're going to file the IND towards the end of the year. And then with AbbVie, uh, we're going to look to take this platform into solid tumors where we think it can make a really serious impact because solid tumors is the place where CAR T cells have not been able to demonstrate efficacy yet. Uh, very briefly, I'll tell you about another program that we have at Caliber, which we're also looking to uh, initiate a, a clinical trial by the end of the year on is a bispecific antibody for prostate cancer. Prostate cancer, uh, everyone knows, really big problem. Here's the uh, general treatment paradigm. Uh, after second line ADT therapy, there really are no effective therapies for prostate cancer. This will continue to progress. Checkpoint inhibitors like PD-1, CTLA-4, these have had really remarkable results in other indications, but not in prostate cancer. And one of the uh, theories behind this is because prostate cancer is poorly immunogenic. It doesn't get the T cells into the prostate cancer lesions that are necessary to have activity. And so um, what we've developed is a therapy called a bispecific antibody, which can actually increase T cell infiltration to that tumor. And in doing so, perhaps reinvigorate a patient's own non-genetically engineered, in this case, T cells in order to uh, eliminate uh, the prostate cancer lesions. And again, the way this works is that we take two antibodies and we fuse them essentially together to create a bridge between a patient's T cell and a target cell. Similar mechanism here, but we're not genetically engineering the cells in this case. These are incredibly, incredibly potent. Picomolar efficacies in vitro, and patients are only being treated with microgram amounts of these uh, by specific antibodies, so potentially overall a lower cost of goods versus monoclonals. But I, I mentioned that Caliber takes a differentiated approach to how we look at these different types of treatment modalities, and in this case, what we wanted to know is what is the most specific way that we can target a prostate cancer cell? Um, and what was known at the time was that imaging agents uh, have this ligand called DUPA, which binds to prostate-specific membrane antigen with very good affinity and specificity. And so what we could do is we could leverage this to actually redirect the bispecific antibody to the prostate cancer cells. And we used some really interesting uh, technology, which was perfectly suited for this type of an application, which is unnatural amino acid incorporation, which was developed in Pete's lab to build this really differentiated molecule, which has bispecific antibody-like efficacy. And it's very different from what had been uh, attempted out there previously, whereas most folks were using full-length antibodies, we use the FAB portion of the antibody. And what that means is that we have much more stable product. We have uh, lower off-target activation. 
and we have half-lives of the molecules which would promote safety uh, in the clinic. We've taken this into mouse models and in collaboration with UCSD and in-house, we've demonstrated that the, uh, the treatment can completely eliminate prostate cancer tumors in mice and we can also treat really difficult to treat intrafemoral tumor models from directly from prostate cancer, so primary patient-derived uh, samples as well. We're looking to take this program into the clinic in a really accelerated way. We've finished all of the non-clinical studies on it, and we're actually writing the IND to file mid-year. We hope to treat the first patient uh, by the end of the year. This is a program that actually came over from Peach Group, too. So it exemplifies the translation approach that Caliber can take uh, with, with programs uh, in collaboration with, with Scripps. So phenomenal team here at Scripps Research. The last thing that I'll mention is that uh, nearly all the folks here that have done the work in the lab have been postdocs, postdocs. Um, Caliber has a really strong postdoctoral training mission, and uh, we've been lucky uh, to get some really outstanding postdocs to conduct this research.